this fellow he again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 so me only nine of us are there he started crying so in advaita sampradaya there is none other than brahma in vishishta advaita sampradaya there is no one like brahma this is the basic understanding regarding dvaita advaita and vishishta advaita sampradayas so what is the purpose of creation bhagavan's intention is something and uh, the result is slightly different <laughs> and i'll explain this it's a very important if at all there is a hypothetical situation where you have done no papa there is no sin at all then even someone hitting you won't cause you pain so we are suffering and he enjoys so is that for what he creates Namaskaram This is the second English episode of this Swairalapam podcast Here I again have with me Madhav ji and uh, Raghunathan ji They are going to ask some questions and uh, I am going to try to answer them The basic idea of this podcast is that we want to address what the main uh, sampradayas of sanatan dharma are and uh, mainly we will be concentrating on vishishta advaita vedanta because uh, that is what uh, we are proficient in so let's start the podcast welcome your questions adiye ramani adiye ramani das ಅಡಿಯ so in the last podcast we had seen that most of the sampradayams uh, which belong to sanatana dharma have their roots in vedas okay now the most important sampradayas or the more the more known sampradayas are three they are called the matatrayam sometimes the advaita Uh, siddhanta or advaita philosophy and you have vishishta advaita and you have dvaita these are the main three and there are lot more like you have uh, uh, achintya bheda bhed uh, shuddha advaita and there are many more okay so the more known sampradayas are these three dvaita advaita vishishta advaita so these are the three ones and why these differences have arisen that's the question now so we have to go to the vedas themselves we have to understand that the vedas are divided into two parts one is called the karma bhaga karma kanda and the other one is called brahma bhaga usually most of the verses in the karma kand they deal with rituals what kind of rituals you should do how to do what are the results of those rituals and all so basically that is a karma kand and then you have the brahma kand which is also called vedant which is also called upanishad okay in that uh, part of vedas creation creator and other truths they are dealt with okay that is the upanishads the vedantas the brahma bhaga now for understanding karma kand and understanding brahma kand there are some texts written by our rishis like you have the disciple of vedavyas ji jaimini we had uh, actually mentioned him to understand the meaning of uh, the word dharma 
ओके सो जैमिनी हैज रिटन दिस पूर्व मीमांसा इट इज इन फॉर्म ऑफ सूत्रस ओके ही हैज रिटन पूर्व मीमांसा इन विच ही ट्राइज टू एक्सप्लेन द कर्म कांड ओके देर आर मेनी क्वेश्चन अरेज अरेजिंग रिगार्डिंग द कर्म कांड विच ही ट्राइज टू अड्रेस इन इज पूर्व मीमांसा एंड वॉट इज अ मीमांसा वॉट इज अ मीमांसा शास्त्र यूजली मीमांसा इज नथिंग बट विचार लाइक द मीमांसा इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड वाक्य शास्त्र यू टेक अ सर्टन सेंटेन्स फ्रॉम दि वेदास एंड एनालाइज हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट इट ओके दट्स वाई इट इज कॉल्ड वाक्य शास्त्र दैट विच हेल्प इन इंटरप्रेटिंग द सेंटेन्सेस ऑफ वेदास सो रिगार्डिंग कर्म कांड यू हैव जेमिनीज पूर्व मीमांसा which deals in how to interpret the sentences of the karma kand and uh, through that interpretation you can understand what to do what not to do etc okay this is pura vimamsa and then you have the acharya that is vedavyas ji writing the mimamsa shastra for the upanishads the vedantas that is called brahma sutra usually this is called pura mimamsa and that is called sharirakam mimamsa uttara mimamsa brahma sutra so in brahma sutra uh, what vera vyasa ji does is he tries to explain the sentences which are present in the upanishads this is mostly uh, the sentences in the upanishads are dealt with in the brahma sutras okay so vedas are divided into two and the shastras the mimamsa shastras which deal with those two parts are also uh, divided into two that is pura mimamsa and uttara mimamsa the uttara mimamsa is the brahma sutras okay now this is one thing and then you have smritis itihasas and puranas which deal with the karma kanda and also brahma kanda there are some parts of these which deal with uh, karma kanda and you have some parts like the bhagavad gita and all which deal with the karma kanda so bhagavad gita which is part of this itihasa mahabharata deals with uh, the brahma bhaga that is upanishads you know this uh, very famous shloka sarva upanishado gavah dogdha gopala nandanah partho vatsah sudhir bhokta dugdham gita amritam mahat so sarva upanishado gavah there are many upanishads and all those upanishads are like cows okay dogdha gopala nandanah the one who extracts milk from those cows that is krishna and partho vatsah arjuna who was listening to the bhagavad gita is just a, like a calf usually the calf just gets some part of the milk and the rest goes to many people so partho vatsah sudhir bhokta the one who enjoys the milk that is the gita is the one who is knowledgeable sudhi hi the gnani the bhakta is the one who actually enjoys this gita amritam the nectar called bhagavad gita so the belief is that krishna had taken the essence from the upanishads and given that through bhagavad gita so now we have three things all these three talk about uh, the brahma okay so these three are considered to be very important in every sampradaya they are called prasthana trayam prasthana trayi dese upanishads brahma sutras and bhagavad gita swami so we can say that veda is divided into two parts one is karma bhaga and the other one is brahma bhaga which is called as upanishads mm-hmm. and uh, we have uh, brahma sutras and bhagavad gita which says about upanishads which deals about upanishads right yes which uh, kind of explain what are in the upanishads okay so we are we end up with th- uh, three important texts and usually uh, how you interpret these texts result in the sampradaya okay so this is the basic uh, foundation for our 
understanding of the differences between uh, sampradayas so so you have these three now among these sampradayas three are considered to be very prominent dvaita advaita vishishta advaita i am going through this order because you can see that dvaita is a basic word and you add something to it and it becomes advaita you add something to it and it becomes vishishta advaita okay these are the three uh, important sampradayas you can consider they are called also called matatraya here we have to be very clear that explaining these doesn't mean that other sampradayas are not important or something like that these are very uh, kind of you know the names of them are also interlinked like you have the dvaita everywhere and there is this usual thought that these are very important okay that's why we are addressing this it doesn't mean other sampradayas are not important okay so now let's start with dvaita okay we have to understand the word dvaita first okay dvaita mata was propagated by uh, madhvacharya he was a very prominent acharya who propagated dvaita siddhanta whenever we say someone has propagated that particular siddhanta usually the belief of the followers of that sampradaya means that it has been coming from uh, long but some acharya has propagated it much uh, further that's all okay so you have madhvacharya who has propagated uh, dvaita sampradaya it also it's also called madhva sampradaya so now uh, so now let's get into the etymology of that word in sanskrit you have this word dvi which means two and you add something to it it becomes dvita dvita means the quality of being two you may call it duality okay dvita is dvaitam there is another some change but that change doesn't uh, change the meaning of that word dvita eva dvaitam they say so dvaitam basically means duality so the basic principle which explains reality is dvaitam they say so when you have dvaitam it means that the world is uh, the world is governed by this principle of dvaitam so what do they believe in they believe that the creator or the paramatma is different from jivatma so they are not one and the same they are different so there is duality between them the sampradaya is also called bheda sampradaya because they believe that the paramatma and the jivatma are different usually there are three entities that we believe in okay uh, the jivatma that is the one who has knowledge and you have the non sentient things which have no knowledge and then you have the paramatma these three in dvaita sampradaya the belief is that jivatma and paramatma are different so there is bheda between them and there is mutual difference between the jivatmas that is i the jivatma is different from you the jivatma you are not one and the same and then now we are we are we have seen about two differences paramatma and jivatma are different jivatma have mutual differences between them and you have the non sentient that is a matter which is different from paramatma so the difference between paramatma and the non sentient the difference between jivatma and the non sentient and the mutual differences between non sentient matter so you have five kinds of differences that they say so the non sentient is different from the sentient beings both of these are different from paramatma and they have mutual differences so we end up with panch bhed there are five kind of five kinds of differences between them so this is basically dvaita sampradaya and dvaita sampradaya is also vaishnava sampradaya 
so they believe in the supremacy of bhagavan vishnu uh, they believe that bhagavan vishnu is swatantra and uh, the others are not and there are many other principles okay these are sampradayas which have hundreds of texts dealing with the sampradayas so explaining them in 5 minutes or 10 minutes is uh, not justifiable but for today's episode let's uh, limit to this so there is a lot regarding this but this is the basic principle so dvaita means they believe that paramatma and jivatma are completely different okay now you add uh, a to dvaita and comes advaita okay usually in sanskrit you have uh, uh, dharma and the opposite is adharma there is a nanya pratyay which when added uh, denotes the opposite okay now dvaitam and advaitam the same etymology dvi dvita dvaitam duality and when you add a, a to it it becomes advait so they believe in non duality now we saw that jivatma is different from paramatma there are differences between this and all what advaitin say they say that there is only one because if there is any other one then you will end up with duality there is something else so they believe that there is only one which is absolutely real okay absolutely real only one which is the nirvishesha chinmatra brahma it is called uh, by different names but it is the brahma which is absolutely real and anything other than that is not real so nirvishesha chinmatra brahma there are you cannot say that it has attributes like if it has some attribute then there is something else other than brahma so it is called nirvishesh and it uh, it is self illuminant something like that so it is called uh, chinmaya jnanamaya uh, so nirvishesha chinmatra brahma it is called okay so in their system it is considered that only brahma is real brahma is real there is difference between brahma and brahma okay in sanskrit the words are brahma brahma is that uh, god the creator god who has four heads and all chaturmukha brahma he is called brahma and brahma is slightly different okay uh, so you have to understand that we are not talking about chaturmukha brahma here okay and again coming to the current topic so in advaita sampradaya brahma satyam jagan mithya jeevo brahmaiva naparaha so only brahma is satyam absolutely real jagan mithya whatever you are seeing this jagat is mithya is an illusion jeevo brahmaiva jeeva is none other than brahma jeevo brahmaiva naparaha is not different okay there are many theories uh, through which they explain that brahma is jeeva there are many theories we are not getting into those things now so this is advaita philosophy in which basically only the brahma is absolutely real anything other than that is an illusion and now in dvaita sampradaya the path to attain liberation is usually bhakti and uh, through bhagavan's grace vishnu's grace you can attain uh, liberation and even in the liberated state the jivatma is different from paramatma okay this is in advaita uh, advaita sampradaya and in advaita uh, they say uh, you must understand that you are just brahma by that understanding you can attain moksha usually it is said that uh, vakya janya vakya artha gnanam there is an anecdote through which they explain this you know there was a guru and he had 10 shishyas along with him they all had to cross a river at some point of time while they were crossing there was a sudden flood and uh, so they had to struggle to cross the river and somehow they managed to cross the river once they crossed the acharya he asked one of his student to just confirm whether 
all 10 have come okay that student he started counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 he counted till 9 and then he, and then he said to his acharya swami there are only 9 of us and he started crying now the acharya he asked another student to count again this fellow he again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 Swami, only nine of us are there. He started crying. Now, the Acharya, uh, he wanted to do by himself. And so, he started counting. He counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then, he saw the first student who counted and told, Dashamastho, see, Ari, you are the 10th person. This fellow, he counted all others and he forgot to count himself. Once the Acharya told him, you are the 10th person, he understood that, yes, I am the 10th person and his sorrow just vanished. Similarly, Jivatmas are in an illusion. Once they understand that they are Brahma, uh, they will get liberated. This is their basic principle. I am simplifying it very much. Okay, Because this is, a, this is also a Sampradaya which has lasted for hundreds of years. There are hundreds or thousands of texts regarding the Sampradaya and so there are many uh, you know explanations regarding how to at attain this and all many thing many things and uh, so this is Advaita Sampradaya and once you uh, realize that you are just liberated now see uh, Brahm is absolutely real so anything other than that has never existed <laughs> It is not even existing now. It's an illusion. Okay. The one who, the you, who are, uh, you know, experiencing this illusion, you are also not true. Okay. So, everything is unreal. You just have to realize that this is unreal. That's all. Okay. You will be liberated. This is their Siddhanta. We are not getting into the nuances. This is a basic explanation of these Sampradayas. And now, let's get into Vishishtadvaita. Hmm. Swami, in the discussion, we have some doubts. As Devari told that uh, there are two parts of the Vedas, Jnana Kanda and Jnana Kanda and Karma Kanda. Okay, yeah. Karma Kanda, Brahma Kanda, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, yes. There, it's also called Jnana Kanda. As hmm. Devari told, there are two parts of the Vedas, Karma Kanda and Jnana Kanda. And Jnana Kanda talks about Brahma. Yes. And as told, this Brahma is different from Brahma, Chaturmukha Brahma. Yes. Then uh, please explain Swami, what is this Brahma? There is a sutra in Brahma Sutras which uh, defines what Brahma is. Like uh, we saw in uh, uh, Puro Mimamsa, Athato Dharma Jignasa said Jemini and then the question arised, who is, what is Dharma? And so he defined Dharma. Similarly, here Vedavyasji, he starts by saying, Athato Brahma Jignasa. We are going to do uh, Vichara regarding Brahma. The question arises, Who is Brahma? So he defines Janma Adhyasya Yataha. So the one who uh, creates, the one who sustains, and the one who destroys is called Brahma. There will be differences in the interpretation in all Sampradayas because each Sampradaya has its own uh, commentary for the Brahma Sutra. So basically, I am going according to Vishishtadvaita in this particular uh, issue. So the one who creates, sustains and destroys is called Brahma. Also, if you get into the etymology of that word Brahma, which is big, that is called Brahma. It's also said in this way, Brihati Brahmayati. The one who is big and the one who makes others big. So that is Brahma. Okay, so that is Brahma. Its definition has been given uh, in uh, Brahma Sutra. And Swami, there is a common question uh, while understanding Advaita is, if Jiva Atma is Brahma, then why Jiva Atma is suffering? See, Jiva Atma is Brahma, they have their own explanation. Right? There is this Avidya, which causes this illusion. Uh, and there is all this karma. There is also, they, it's not that they don't, uh, see, in Advaita, there are three stages. It is called Pratibhasika Satyatvam, Vyavaharika Satyatvam and Paramarthika Satyatvam. There are three stages. Now, 
you see something okay you see something you think that there is a snake while you are seeing a rope so you are you have an illusion now right so is there a snake there no but for you you have thought that there is a snake so it pratibhasika satya that okay but there is a next stage okay which is called vyavaharika satyatvam now you have this world you have you you have me you have raghunathan here you have these cameras and all and so you do something you are affected by the results of that and so this is all vyavaharika satya this is real in its own way okay it's vyavaharika satya they say see when you saw the snake there was no snake when i came to you and told you that are it's not a snake it's just a rope your illusion vanished okay similarly when someone comes and tells you you are none other than brahma tatvam asi then your illusion will also vanish so the objects in the pratibhasika satyatva stage they will vanish through some kind of knowledge and those objects in the vyavaharika satyatva stage will vanish when you get brahma gnana okay so there are three stages and so the paramarthika satya that is absolute real is only brahma this is basically my understanding of their principle okay there may be more nuances to it here in the vyavaharika stage there is this karma there is this karma pravah which is causing you to uh, bear the results okay so you are suffering and then again you must understand that brahma is never touched by all these things it is not affected by all these things this is just an illusion which is not real at all so if you think about brahma brahma is always not affected by this so they say brahma is not affected by this so once you realize that you will just become you will realize that if nothing is true your suffering is not true uh, your experiences are not true everything okay your karma is not true that so the basic understanding is that brahma is never uh, affected by this uh, so there are uh, more nuances to this i think uh, let's stop with this <laughs> okay so now devra can uh, explain us about yeah, yeah. vishishtadvaita yeah now let's go to vishishtadvaita we saw dvaita we added a uh, uh, or nanya which became advaita and then we add another word vishishta which becomes vishishta advaita usually this is called qualified non duality okay this advait but vishishta advait usually the word vishishta is used in sanskrit when something is uh, along with some other thing like guna vishishta a uh, guna vishishta means that which has a quality which possesses a quality that is guna vishishta we see someone and uh, we say dosha vishishta he has some bad quality he is uh, he is along with a bad quality dosha vishishta and you can say you can use this word to denote the relationship between two things okay when i say uh, he has quality we understand that there is a relationship between that quality and him okay now here when we use the word vishishta we use this to denote that the brahma that is a paramatma is qualified with some things like he has something has his qualities or attributes when we use the word vishishta it means that there is something more than one because vishishta means one is along with another so the word vishishta cannot be used without there being another thing so by the virtue of using the word vishishta we agree that there is something other than paramatma so whatever we saw in dvaita sampradaya that is paramatma is different from jivatma paramatma is different from uh, the non sentient things those hold true even for vishishta advaita siddhanta okay paramatma is different jivatma is different and non sentient things they are different 
So usually we say Tattvatraya. There are three things for real. What are they? Chit, which means Jeevatma, which has knowledge. That is sentient. And we have non-sentient uh, things such as objects like this. We must understand that even our body is considered to be non-sentient. Only the Jeevatma is sentient. He is called a Chit or Chetan. Sometimes people confuse with the words living things and Chetan. No, it's different. In When we learn in our schools and all, they say human is a living thing. Okay. But in Sampradayas, the Jeevatma is sentient. Or in Vishishtadha Siddhanta, Jeevatma is sentient and the body is non-sentient. This body is uh, as sentient as this table. Okay. The Jeevatma is the one who possesses knowledge. Okay. So, Chetan, Achetan, Chit, Achit. And you have the Ishwar, the Paramatma, who controls both of these. Okay. So, you have three uh, things which are true, which are absolutely real. Actually, in our Sampradaya, all of these are eternal. Like Prakriti is eternal. I mean, Achetan are eternal. Chetan is eternal. Ishwar is also eternal. See, how is this Achetan eternal? The belief is, there is this particle which changes. It changes to some other form. It only changes, but it never gets completely destroyed. This is our belief. So, there is this Prakriti which is the origin of all non-sentient objects. That Prakriti turns into Mahan. Mahan turns into some other object. It uh, turns into Panchamahabhut. And they are used to make all these objects. So, this is the Krama. But again, all these are just changes. There is an object which changes. We have a paper which used to be a tree. <laughs> when you burn the paper, it becomes ash. It will just uh, mix into mud. It will maybe again become a tree. Okay. So, objects are changing, but they never get destroyed. So, Achetan is also eternal, in a sense. And when you come to Chetan, that is Jivatma, in Achetan, the object itself changes. When you come to the Jivatma, Jivatma doesn't change. He remains the same, but his attribute, that is his knowledge, it differs. Okay. Uh, so, that is Chetan, Achetan. And then you have Ishwar. Ishwar, he is Nirvikar. He is never uh, affected by anything. He doesn't change at all. That is Ishwar. And uh, we consider that Ishwar is present everywhere. That is Paramatma is present everywhere. While the Jivatma is Anuswarupa. He is very minute. And Prakriti, you know, it's uh, spread everywhere. Uh, but it changes here and there. Okay. This is called Tattvatraya. Three realities. Now, when we talk about Paramatma, we say that Paramatma is, Paramatma has these two as his attributes. Okay. So, Paramatma is Vishishta. Is along with these two. What are these? Chetan, Achetan. So, when we talk about Brahma, we say Chetan, Achetan, Vishishta Brahma. There is a relationship between the Chetana Chetan and Brahma. So, when we use this word Vishisht, we mean that there are three things and they have some unique relationship with Brahma. So, the, by the virtue of using the word Vishisht, we agree upon Bhed. So, even though there is this word Advaita coming, but the, the reality is that in Vishishta Advaita Siddhanta, there are three things which are for real. They are not illusion. They are for real. And there is a unique relationship uh, between these. Like Paramatma and both of these. There is a unique relationship. Now when we saw the Dvaita Sampradaya, we saw, we saw that there are five differences. For us also there will be five differences. Okay. Paramatma is different from Jivatma. Jivatma, there is uh, mutual differences. In Achetan also there will be mutual differences. And the difference with the Paramatma. So, five differences. We will also agree. We are not very, uh, you know, intent upon telling these five differences. But that holds true even for us. 
but there is one difference that uh, makes us different from dvaita sampradaya what is that when we say that there is a unique relationship between paramatma and both of these we say that paramatma has both of these as his bodies we say shariratma bhava so what is the unique relationship between chetana chetan and brahma that is shariratma bhava this paramatma is the atma that is he is residing inside everyone and all of us be it the jivatma or the non sentient objects all these are bodies of bhagavan there are pramana saying jagat sarvam shariram te tat sarvam vai hare stanu so there are many pramanas even in the vedas and in the puranas and all where it is said that all these are the bodies of bhagavan so there is a very unique relationship between uh, chetana chetan and brahma so by saying the word vishisht we mean chetana chetan vishisht brahma now see you are there you are madhav ji or this is ragunathan when i say ragunathan came i consider him to be one entity but it doesn't mean that he kept his soul that is himself in his home and came does that mean that when i use the word ragunatha it also denotes the body and the soul inside and both of these have an intimate relationship that is the body and the soul have a very intricate and intimate relationship between them which makes us consider the whole thing as one okay similarly the bhagavan and the chetana chetan they have such an intimate relationship that they can be considered to be one so the one brahma along with chetana chetan can be considered to be one so vishishtasya advaitam vishishta advaitam so by the virtue of using the word vishishta we have made it clear that these are different entities and when we say advaitam we say this is one so they are in such a intimate relationship that is body uh, soul relationship so they can be considered to be one entity okay so this is vishishta advaita and that principle which uh, makes us different from dvaita sampradaya is that we believe there is this shariratma bhava among uh the chetana chetan and paramatma which is not agreed upon by them shariratma bhav that is the main difference between these sampradayas there will be some nuances there are many other uh theoretical things like guna guni bheda uh, they believe in abheda and all there are some things okay so this is vishishta advaita sampradaya where we consider that paramatma is one but along with this he can be considered to be one entity that's all okay when i say you are one it doesn't mean that you don't have any parts you are you know you have many parts you possess many parts but along with these parts you can be considered to be one similarly bhagavan has everything as his sharira that is body and he can be considered to be one so this is vishishta advaita sampradaya in simple words usually we say in advaita sampradaya there is none other than brahma in vishishta advaita we say there there is none other like brahma okay so only bhagavan is advaiti like he is chetana chetana vishisht there can be no other person who is chetana chetana vishisht so there is no one like brahma so in advaita sampradaya there is none other than brahma in vishishta advaita sampradaya there is no one like brahma this is the basic understanding regarding dvaita advaita and vishishta advaita sampradayas okay swami you have mentioned prasthana traya at the beginning of this podcast so for example if we take veda vyasa veda vyasa gave the brahma sutras to us so and then 
uh when we come to the acharyas that is madhvacharya shankaracharya and ramanujacharya they are interpreting this brahma sutras so the basis of their interpretation is brahma sutras which was given by one person so why there are these many differences for me this creates a lot of confusion among many people see i as i mentioned before there are three important texts and each acharya parampara interprets that in a different way okay so we are left with these differences that is the truth usually whenever you take a sentence you know i say something you will go into the if you go into the comment sections you will find that someone took it in a wrong way okay someone will say we are just uh, promoting our sampradaya only someone will say that we have never used a word demeaning any other sampradaya even in our previous podcast but you go to the comment section someone will be saying uh, you were demeaning our sampradaya you were not using this word that word something and so but was my intention that we had particularly said that we must never disrespect other religions that was our main purport of that uh, podcast but some person comes and comments that you were demeaning other sampradaya you were promoting vishishta advaita okay see you just we post something and then you have different interpretations of that we tell a sentence there is a differences so you have this word uh, denoting vedas chandah chadayati iti chandah that which hides its contents and the vedas doesn't clearly always speak about what they say and coming to brahma sutras they are in the form of sutras okay uh in sutra format you will find that they are very concise very small and so they give space for many kinds of interpretations see it is not like attaining liberation is not so easy so bhagavan he has propagated all these sampradayas okay so there is space for differences in interpretations due to the nature of these texts okay so there have been many kind of interpretations so this is the basic uh, thing i do, i want to say i'm not answering it directly but uh, you know this is what they had and what we have now there are differences i have told um, more about all these things in the previous podcast how to choose what to do and all okay so sami has said this uh, all uh, the three matams are coming from vedas so what are the references in our scriptures which support uh, the three matas yeah 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 see there are usually i'll answer this in as a vishishta advaiti okay see we say that there are three kinds of shrutis three kinds of sentences bheda shruti abheda shruti ghataka shruti there are some sentences in the vedas which seem to uh, tell that only brahma is real everything is brahma that's all like they are supporting advaita so they are called abheda shruti abheda there is no difference between all only bhagavan is only brahma is true okay they are called abheda shruti like tatvamasi aham brahmasmi sarvam khalvidam brahma so these are all telling that everything is brahma so brahma is the only truth only real absolute real object okay these are abheda shruti and then we have some bheda shruti bheda shruti means which seem to say that there are differences between uh, three entities like prithag atmanam prerita arancha matva atma is different uh, prerita the one who controls the atma is different uh, bhokta bhogyam prerita arancha matva so there is bhokta there is bhogyam there is prerita the enjoyer the things which are enjoyed that is the non sentient things and the controller bhagavan so three entities this uh, sentence seem to be seem to say that there are uh, three objects which are different okay so you have abheda shruti those sentences which seem to propagate ad- advait that is abheda 
and you have some bheda shruti which seem to propagate uh bhed so usually if you take advaitins they give importance to these sentences and they'll have their own interpretations for other shrutis also and if you take other sampradayas they'll give importance to uh, bheda shruti and they'll have their own interpretation of abheda shrutis okay coming to vishishta advaita sampradaya we say that both of these are not contradictory so we use the third kind of shruti called ghataka shruti ghataka means that which joins okay ghataka shruti we say yasya atma shariram yasya prithivi shariram there are some parts of vedas which say that bhagavan is atma of every object so everything is bhagavan's body we have seen about that before so we say that in bheda shrutis the difference between these uh chetana chetan brahm it is as it has been explained so the word vishishta we had a scene in that in that words meaning regarding this so that has been explained by the uh bheda shrutis and when we said advait we say that the whole entity it can be considered to be one so nothing else is there so with uh, bhagavan being the atma of everything you can even interpret abheda shruti in that way so if it is said that bhagavan is this jagat it means bhagavan is residing in jagat also he is antaryami of this jagat so we say that there is no contradiction between abheda shrutis and bheda shrutis because there is this ghataka shruti which explains the relationship between both these okay so some people give importance to bheda shrutis some people give to abheda shrutis we use this ghataka shrutis to uh, you know reconcile all of this that is our standpoint okay so in vedas there are many kinds of sentences hence the differences in sampradaya swami we just want to uh, know much more about vishishta advaita and uh, we just want you to please uh, elaborate the sharira atma bhava sambandha which you have mentioned earlier see like this jivatma that is me i possess this body i have control over this body a limited amount of control okay similarly bhagavan possesses everything as his body uh usually there are three things that makes this a body like this body sustains till i reside inside that is a jivatma is once the jivatma gets out it starts falling it starts withering and all okay uh in normal circumstances okay and i can control this body to an extent and this body was given to me for a sake for my purpose okay for something i did before it has been given to me so yasya chetanasya yadravyam sarvatmana swarthe dharayitum niyantum cha shakyam tat cheshatai karasam cha tat tasya shariram this is the definition given by ramanujacharya so there are three things i must be able to control it it must not exist after i uh, leave it and it is there for me these are the three things so bhagavan is able to control all the all those things he resides inside and also everything is there for him everything is there for him so without paramatma being inside nothing is going to sustain so the basic definition of sharira is this that which is being controlled by the atma that which exists due to the atma and which is there for the atma and this definitions definition holds true for the whole world when it is seen as the sharira of bhagavan okay so this is sharira atma bhava we say and what do you want to know more about this some this uh, sharira atma sambandham between jeeva atma and bhagwan is it similar to the sharira and atma that we are witnessing that i am having a sharira and uh, as the sharira will get some disease i will get some pain the sharira will go grow older and i will be called an old man hmm. so the sharira atma sambandham between bhagwan and jeeva atma is it just how we are having shariram see 
it is not exactly like that now you are not an old man your body becomes old but does that affect jivatma directly no the jivatma is as it is it will be it has been okay so the oldness doesn't directly affect the jivatma but it may cause some pain to it okay oldness uh, really uh, related diseases and all and so it comes to the first point like when uh, something hits you your body the atma feels the pain now you are feeling pain because you have done some karma before okay you have obtained this sharira this body due to your previous karma if at all there is a hypothetical situation where you have done no papa there is no sin at all then even someone hitting you won't cause you pain okay so the reason you obtained this body is karma so you are affected by the body but bhagavan he is there he is residing everywhere not due to any karma so bhagavan is not affected by residing here vaisheshya there is a sutra even in brahma sutras regarding this actually there are in vishishtadvaita uh, interpretation of the brahma sutras there are three or even more sutras which deal with uh, the same kind of question okay uh, one of the sutras answer in this way uh, so i'll answer that in that way so that hetu vaisheshya desi there is a difference in the reason why someone possesses a body bhagavan has no karma so he won't be affected by that by the pain and all okay swami uh, this uh, jeevatma and uh, achit are the body of bhagwan and we also know about the body of bhagwan like shankh chakra gadha pani hi mm. so are both bodies same or is the difference between them yeah see everything is bhagwan's body okay that is one thing these are all called sadharana vigrahas sadharana sharira which is common see your body is there you the jivatma is controlling your body is parmatma present in your body yes he is present in every uh, particle of your body also he is present inside you also that is the jivatma also so this body is also his body but it's also your body so this is common this is common for him and a jivatma but when we speak about those uh divine forms of bhagavan they are just forms of bhagavan himself so we have to understand that when we say paramatma paramatma is that gnana anandamaya swarup which is present everywhere who is omnipresent who is omniscient that bhagavan is present everywhere he is the omnipresent bhagavan and he possesses bodies here and there like everything is body other than that he possesses some asadharana vigraha asadharan which is special to him exclusive to him so bhagavan possesses these kind of bodies everywhere even in shivaikuntha in vishnu loka uh, in you know the kshirabdhi that is milk ocean and and when he takes an avatar like rama or krishna and all he possesses a divine body which is unique for him okay that is different from these bodies so this is common for a jivatma and paramatma and uh, bhagavan doesn't consider them to be divine forms of him it is his body but he has some vishesh sankalpa vishesh abhiman over some kind of bodies some forms of his divine forms Th- those are uh, divine so those forms they are divine by two reasons one is bhagavan considers them differently another thing is they are aprakrit that is they are not uh, a result of this prakriti so all these objects we see our body or these these are prakrit we say they are from prakriti but bhagavan's divine form be it in shivaikunth or be it in akshirabdhi or be it in ramakrishna devataras bhagavan has a divine form the particle itself is divine okay which is called uh, shuddha sattva and all so there is different between that bhagavan's form and this common form 
that is body okay maybe it's complicated for our listeners but please uh, feel free to ask your questions in the comment section because this podcast maybe it's very dry uh, because it's again philosophies and all maybe it's dry and you may have many questions in these things so you may ask in the comment section and uh, you know we are talking more about vishishta advaita because we are proficient in it okay maybe when we talk more about advaita we may start doing some mistakes because we are not very uh, you know very deeply into advaita so we are talking more about vishishta advaita uh, so don't start commenting in your comment section that you are trying to propagate vishishta advaita and i have told before also you know everyone propagates his sampradaya what's wrong in it you propagate your sampradaya i'll propagate my sampradaya it's not wrong but we have to respect each other you know i must not come and comment in your videos that you are propagating advaita i have told before itself that we have to protect our own sampradayas as much as possible because other than these sampradayas nothing there is nothing called hinduism okay so that is the issue and again okay swiya aradhana sarva aradhana swami you said that hmm. bhagavan is eternal jiva is eternal achit is also eternal so then why we are saying that bhagavan created then what is the meaning of the word creation for me mm-hmm. so when everything is there so there is no need to create anything okay okay i'll i'll answer this okay see there is a potter who creates a pot okay was there mud before the pot yes or the clay yes yes it yes. was there then what did he create pot pot so what is creation you have something you change that into something else that is creation the clay was made into a pot that is creation so who is the creator there pot. the potter is the creator okay similarly when it is said that bhagavan created this world this was prakriti prakriti means mula prakriti we say which is the origin of all non sentient beings bhagavan changed that prakriti into panchabhuta and used that to make this world so he changing those objects is creation see there is lot of clay with a potter now he creates many pots he creates many kinds of vessels and all okay what has he done he has changed them into different objects and now they have different names to them so regarding achetan he changes them gives them names and regarding chetan what is creation see when bhagavan creates the chetan was al- already existing and in our sampradaya we believe that he has been existing from eternity it uh, when we say that creation has begun it means that there was a pralaya before and creation is happening now so it is just a cycle there is no time when we say creation happened first time no it is happening from uh, time unknown it is just happening always that's a anadi we say so creation destruction creation destruction this is the cycle which is coming and going coming and going because in other religions there is this belief that uh, god creates once that's all we don't believe that he has been creating he has been destroying for eternity so while coming to the jivatma that is the chetana uh the creation is nothing but giving him a body when destruction has taken place jivatma he is as good as the achetan that is the non sentient being during creation bhagavan gives him body sense organs through which he can expand his knowledge okay so bhagavan is not changing jivatma also he is just changing the knowledge or he is enabling this jivatma to gain knowledge so that is the creation uh, what bhagavan does regarding the jivatma so you have to change a particle to create it that's all yes mud is made into a pot clay is made into a pot that's all that is creation 
similarly a jivatma who was unable to uh, gain knowledge has been changed to a situation where he can gain knowledge that is creation of jivatma that doesn't mean jivatma was created no nothing so that is how we explain creation okay so we are mentioning brahma bhagavan these terms as per vishishta advaita who is brahma okay see uh in these three sampradayas i had mentioned about madhvacharya who propagated uh, dvaita sampradaya and uh, shankaracharya was the main acharya who propagated uh, advaita sampradaya and for uh, vishishta advaita siddhanta it was ramanuja acharya okay i forgot to mention their names because it is very famous everyone knows that and again coming to your question uh, in advaita it is nirvishesha chinmatra brahma so you cannot uh, consider that to be a deity and all okay it is slightly different okay coming to dvaita sampradaya vishishta advaita both are vaishnava matas and so paramatma is vishnu he can be called by other names also usually in our sampradaya that is vishishta advaita sampradaya we say shriman narayana the narayana is the narayana he is another, another name is vishnu okay so he is the brahma he is the paramatma okay so there is a difference and you know there are many nuances to this in advaita also you have narayana you have brahma you have shiva yeah, everyone but it will be in the vyavaharika stage you will have all of this okay and there is much more to it okay but coming to vishishta advaita siddhanta we consider paramatma to be narayana so narayana created us uh, we are staying in this samsara at some point of time we realize that we must attain him so then how can we attain him where will go after attaining him in vishishta advaita siddhanta that is the sampradaya propagated by ramanuja acharya we believe that bhakti and sharanagati are two ways to attain bhagavan there is much more to it uh, so by doing sharanagati you can attain bhagavan and attaining bhagavan means you have to go to a certain place because for us jivatma is minute he is residing in the samsara he must go to vaikuntha that is a paramapada it is called vaikuntha and all he must go there and uh, doing eternal service to bhagavan is considered to be the uh, uh, goal so what is the purpose of creation so why the purpose of creation okay so basically bhagavan's intention is something and uh, the result is slightly different <laughs> and i'll explain this it's a very important question okay bhagavan bhagavan's intention is to liberate all jivatmas okay because in pralaya kala that is after destruction jivatmas cannot even gain knowledge they are not in a situation to gain knowledge so they can do nothing to attain liberation but once the creation is done they have the ability to gain knowledge and attain liberation so bhagavan creates them with this in mind but what happens is most of us do not use the knowledge to attain liberation so in the last thousands or you know innumerable innumerable creations we hadn't used that knowledge for good so we are still here we are still in samsara so bhagavan's intention is that but bhagavan also knows that all jivatmas are not going to come to him he knows that for sure so his intention was to bring all jivatmas towards him what what happened is he just got leela at he just you know enjoys this like you see there is a small child you gave him a chocolate mm-hmm. he didn't eat it he threw it somewhere okay what do you what did you what will you do are i gave him a chance he didn't use that sometimes you laugh similarly bhagavan has a laugh okay bhagavan has a laugh at what we do so his intention was to bring jivatma towards him but he at the end has a laugh so we are suffering and he enjoys so is that for what he creates <laughs> see see bhagavan's intention was not that okay his intention was to uh, liberate us give us something we did not use that in the right way and so bhagavan kind of uh, you know ends up enjoying that all now actually the main question must be so me enjoyment we are suffering we are suffering so much pain 
and how can that be enjoyment for him okay that is the question here see it's not like uh, not like literal enjoyment okay there are two things to this we usually say lakshmi ji and bhagavan with lakshmi ji's uh, suggestion bhagavan starts creating so here bhagavan and lakshmi ji just look at each other we created this ended up like this so parents you know they have this laugh no light like, like, slight smile like we did this dekho see he just threw it away don't we laugh have a slight smile that is the kind of smile they have and one thing is that so if we are suffering so much for them it is smile no you should not think so see we tell some uh, child to not go fast but it goes fast and falls it has got some minor pain any minor pain which will last for one minute or two minutes we'll say i told him he did not listen we'll just smile okay similarly bhagavan smiles we must understand that whatever we are suffering beat the greatest suffering in bhagavan's time when it's just like a fall we have taken uh, innumerable janmas so for bhagavan if you see this janma is like a millisecond or something in which we are crying for small small miseries for bhagavan they are like just a fall which is going to result in a rise again okay even some things as bad as death they are just a very small thing in his timeline and another thing is it is also a result of what we have done it's not like bhagavan intentionally pushes us it's not so so it is due to karma that this happens so we have to bring in the karma theory and bhagavan's smile is more like a disappointed smile are okay so that is kind of the smile he has so his intention is liberation like the purpose of creation is liberation but what ends up happening is mostly all of the people don't get liberated there are some people who will get liberated all the others just uh, you know are stuck in the cycle they will again be destroyed and again created okay this is the issue and uh, there are many more questions regarding this so if bhagavan's intention was something and if that did not happen then can bhagavan's intention go wrong this is a question satya sankalpa ha he satya sankalpa how how can that go wrong there is one question and uh, there are many more questions like this i think we can answer these questions along with karma theory and all in another podcast so uh, let's leave people with some kind of suspense let's answer them in the next podcast uh, let's meet again in that podcast i don't think you know this is more like a conversation we have not prepared much for this it's a very candid conversation the the name swairalapam suggests that So, swaira lapa means swair means uh, you know free ala means you can consider talk free talk we haven't prepared much we just came here sat down and had a talk so there will be many things which have which may have been left out okay so please don't come and start pouring negative comments try to understand what we want to do you can help us doing that or ask questions and help us answer those things so this is one thing i want to tell you all we'll meet you again in another podcast where we'll try to explain more things regarding sanatana dharma and uh, vishishta advaita philosophy etc etc so uh, actually i think we need to post more about karma theory and all there are many benefits of understanding karma theory and i see that many people don't understand what karma theory actually means we do something it gives a result it always gives a result there is a basic theory but how does that work there are many questions regarding that and there are many very interesting explanations given by ramanuja acharya and other commentators so i think we must do one podcast regarding that maybe it will be our next episode where we'll bring all these things also like if bhagavan's intention is that and it doesn't happen what happens to his satya sankalpatva okay there are many questions regarding that we'll answer them in the coming up podcast okay so on the behalf of all the viewers uh, we are very thankful to you swami for uh, 
spending some time and enlightening us on the some basic tenets of uh, uh, sampradayas and particularly visishta dvaita sampradaya so if the viewers uh, if there are some questions please ask us in the comment section we would be uh, requesting swami uh, to answer those in the next podcast swami shrimate ramanujayanam adi shrimate ramanujayanam